Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My daddy, my father, I thank you tonight again. I give you all glory because you are the mighty God. Father, I bless you tonight for what you are about to do again tonight. Father, into your hands I commit my mouth. Father, I use my mouth again as a pen of writing to write your word in the heart of your children. Father, you said to me some time ago that you have called me to build your altar in the hearts of people, that the altar you have asked me to build is not the altar that they build on the ground, but the altar in the heart of men. Father, I can only do that through your word. Lord Jesus, tonight I place my ears in your mouth. Speak to me that you may speak through me. Father, every anti-word of God, I silence them tonight. Every anti-Christ spirit, every demonic power that want to hinder your word tonight, Father, I frustrate them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every sort of distraction, connection, that want to disconnect the network, O oh Lord, or that want to be frustrating anybody to be calling up Adam, to start fr frustrating themselves today, Anywhere they are planning such, I bind them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, wherever your children are connected from right now, I soak every house with the blood of Jesus Christ. I soak all the gadgets in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I soak all the internet in the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, the Holy Spirit, because you are in control. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Tonight, as we are known, in this ministry, nobody has the word of his own. Nobody can speak except the Lord has spoken. Tonight, I'm going to speak again what the Lord has asked me to speak to us tonight. The topic tonight says, Be courageous. Why waiting on the Lord? Or rather, be courageous while waiting for the Lord. Be courageous while waiting for the last day to come. Be courageous while waiting for your husband to come and marry you home. Be courageous while waiting to go and drink that vine with the Lord in the banquet hall in heaven. Be courageous. It takes only courage this time around to run this race we have entered into. Brothers and sisters, the race is more tense now. Satan is turning everything into sin. Whatever you do yesterday that makes you happy today, if you do it again now, it becomes sin to you. Satan is adulterating everything around us. Satan is point his hand into things that were righteous yesterday. So therefore, you need courage, any courage to move with the, with the wings of the Holy Ghost now. You need courage, any courage to move with whatever word the Lord have told us to work with now. Because this time around, the devil is pressing people to the world. The devil is doing all he can to bring sex into sinner. And I tell you, many sex are falling apart. Things are falling apart with the children of God now. Because many of the children of God lack the courage. Satan is making the children of God to be pushed to the world. And many that are pushed to the world now, they are backsliding. But tonight, the Lord has sent me to tell you and I that we must be courageous. We must be strong because your adversary, the devil, is putting more effort to bring you down. He can use everything around you. He can use material things. He can use spiritual things. It can make somebody who is not born again to be progressive and you 
it's as if nothing's happening to you just to make you fall apart. Somebody who does not pray, somebody who does not even go to church, somebody who has not pulled away whatever God says you put away, you will see that person making money where you will go to. You cannot get it. The person will go there, he will bring it out. Those things are to press you to the wall. Those things are to discourage you to give up. But the Lord is telling you and I today, we must be courageous. We must be strong. We must put our hope and our trust in Him. Look unto Him, else you will fall. The Bible says in Psalm 27, verse 30 to 14, I had fainted. This is Brother David speaking here. This is Uncle David speaking here. Say, I have fainted. Remember, they also waited the way we are waiting now. Uncle David, Papa Abraham, Brother Isaac, Brother Jacob, uncles, all of them that have made it, they all waited the way you and I are waiting now. Now, this one, Brother David is telling us right, us right now. In Psalm 27, verse 13 to 14, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord is encouraging you and I. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He said himself would have fainted if not at the long run he started seeing things that were happening in his life. When he was running heter skater, when he was running up and down, if not because of the light he saw he so shining at the end, he would have fainted. So he's telling you and I, he's admonishing you and I now, we must be courageous. Say, wait on the Lord. Courageously wait upon the Lord. Courageously stay put in the salvation you've gotten. Courageously keep on moving in the way of holiness and righteousness. Now, he said, be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Where, the, where Satan is targeting is your heart. He wants to make sure that your heart is being confused. He wants to make sure he puts you to the wall and your heart will be confused. I tell you, if you are confused, he will diffuse your anointing. If you are confused, he will make sure that your crown is being diffused out of your hands. So, wait on the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Courageously wait on the Lord. No matter what you are going through, no matter what the devil is doing to you, the Lord is telling you and I, for your crown not to be pulled out of your hands, you have to wait on the Lord. For your crown not to be seized from you, we have to wait on the Lord. We should use all means to wait on the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 37 verse 1 to 5, Chapter 37 from 1. The Bible says, Fret not thyself. Don't be jealous. Don't be envious. Fret not thyself. In this end time, when you see some people making it, fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Today, many believers are envy of unbelievers. Many Christians are envy of people who are not born again. They compare themselves with people of the world. Look at that sister is making it. That sister has given birth. I have not given birth. That sister, look at, he, he, they, they have got a document. I have not got it. Compare themselves with people who will be perished tomorrow. You that is in the light, compare yourself in, with people in darkness. The Bible says, fret not thyself. Because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass 
and wither are the green herbs. Trust in the Lord and do good. Keep on doing good. Keep on living righteously. Keep on doing what the Lord has put in your hands. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land. And very and verily thou shalt be fed. The Lord have a bowl of food for you. He have a bowl of anointing for you. If only you can wait on him. If only you can be courageous. If only you can decide to say no. No matter what the devil do, I will not surrender. If only you have made up your mind to say no, Satan, I'm not going to give way. I'm not going to surrender to you. No matter what I see somebody else doing, I'm not going to be envious of that person. I'm moving on. I'm going on. I know who I am. I know where I am waiting for. Praise Mother Jesus. The Bible says, Delight thyself also in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord. In the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of the heart. What is that thing that Satan is giving to his children that God cannot give to you? But God does not do, do his own the way Satan does his own. Satan can rushly give you whatever you need just that, so that he can also rushly take your soul out of your hands. Satan can give you whatever you are interested of in this world because he knows he's there to take your soul from you. Now, the Bible is telling you and I, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of the heart. Our God is not a liar. Whatever he says he will do, he will do it. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Commit your way unto the Lord. Commit everything you are doing unto the Lord. Courageously commit everything to the Lord. He said, I should tell you, he will do it for you. If you faith not that which you are waiting for, the Lord will certainly do it for you. He will bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noon day. This is what the Lord wants to see in you. You want to make sure that even after He has blessed you, you will still be righteous. His blessing will not make you to become a sinner. The blessing of Satan pull you out of righteousness. But the blessing of God will make you to stand in righteousness the more. And He, the blessing that God will give to you, will bring forth your righteousness as light. So that every person around you will see it and say, Yes, yeah, this is actually a blessing that never brings sorrow. And, he, and the light, and they, the judgment are the new day. Rest in the Lord, verse 7. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently. This is where the bottom is. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently. Don't be hasty to get that thing you are looking for. If you are hasty, Satan will overcome. Satan will come to you and give it to you. We think it is God that I bring for you. Don't be too in haste to get whatever you are looking for. Rest in the Lord, brothers and sisters. Especially in this end time that Satan is releasing demonic blessings to his children. Don't be envious of them. Don't look at them before you start praying. Don't imitate them before you start praying your prayer. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Wait patiently for the Lord. In this race we are running, wait patiently of the, for the Lord. No matter the temptation, no matter the trials, no matter the buffeting, no matter what you are going through, please don't lose your crown because of the trouble of this world. Don't lose your eternity because of what you are passing through. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is nothing we pass through in this world that will be compared to a, a second in hell fire. So therefore, rest in the Lord and wait patiently on Him. Treat not thyself because of Him who prospered in His ways, because of the man who bringeth wickedness device to pass, because of that man who brings wicked device to pass. Maybe you are doing the same business as what he's doing. That person is excelling in his business. 
you never can tell that person kill human being every two two months. But you are saying, Lord, you are comparing yourself with that person. You know hopefully well that man is not born again. You know hopefully well that lady is not born again. That man can go extra mile to do whatever that he's doing. Now you are comparing yourself with the person. And yet you are saying you are a born again Christian. It's a lie. Now the Lord is telling you and I, we must wait patiently on him. Are you looking for a document? Wait patiently on him. Are you looking for a child? Wait patiently on him. Don't go and start messing up your sperm with the sperm of gorilla. Don't go and start messing up your sperm with the sperm of snakes, serpent. And after some more staggering testimony in the church. Hmm. Don't go and start recruiting Antichrist with them. Or else you will pay. You will go the way they also went. The Bible says in James chapter 5 from 7 to 11. James 5, 7 to 11. Be patient therefore. Be patient therefore. Brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Be patient unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waited, the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth. And had long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. Just as farmers will wait for their crops, they will clear the bush, burn it, plant. They will wait patiently for the crop to grow, weed it, do everything, and at the end they will reap it. That's what the Lord is telling you and I today. Let us wait patiently as we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. Don't join those people that are saying, how long will it take to come? It can come at any time. My brothers and sisters, let us do all we can to wait on the Lord patiently. The Bible says, and how the man, that, that the farmer have long patience for it until he receives the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient as the farmers have been patient. Be ye also patient in waiting for the Lord, in waiting for that thing you are looking for. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord, draw it near. Brothers and sisters, with your heart waving, stabilize it now. Are you thinking of going back? I beg you, don't go back. At that moment you are going back, that is the moment the trumpet will sound. At that particular, I'm telling you, Satan is holding cutlass at your back. Immediately you step back, it will hit you down. The only reason that Satan has not been able to kill you is because you are seeing the Lord. Immediately you succumb to him. It will destroy you there so that you will not be able to come back again. It's not everybody that basleed that are able to, to come back again. Maybe you have basleed there before. Don't do it again. Don't try it again. The Bible says, grudge not one against another. Brethren, let ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Don't envy one another. If you are keeping malice, stop keeping malice now. If you hate any of your brother, please forgive now. Say, Behold, the judges of all judges is standing by the door. Whatever you have in heart for anybody, take it away now. Or else you're going to pay very soon. My daddy said I should tell you and I. The chief judge of the federation is standing by the door. He's about to judge you and I. Verse 10. I'm reading James 5, 7 to 11. Verse 10. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Remember our brothers of old, Jeremiah, our brothers of old, Ezekiel, Isaiah, all of them, they all passed through, they all went through. If you don't want to pass through, you will never go through. If you are not ready to, ready to pass through the hordes of this world, you will not be able to go through the gate of heaven. Be ready to pass through shame. Be ready to pass through humiliation. Be ready to pass through denial. The Bible says our brothers of old, our prophets of old, who prophesy what you are seeing now, say they, they went through. For example, of suffering, affliction, and the of patience. But today, 
Nobody want to pass through again. No man of God want to suffer again. In those days, the first church, they passed affliction, humiliation, but today is they pass through prosperity. They pass through whatever their hand gets to, they want to be rich. But in those days, it's from prison to prison. But for today, it's from prosperity to prosperity. Nobody wants to suffer again. But the prophet of old, they suffered. Apostle Paul suffered. Apostle Peter suffered. Before the gospel get to us today, they, they almost all of them died for it. But today, nobody wants to die for Christ again. We all want to live a luxurious life. As Peter life. Today, we want to have an exotic church. A mega church where all food will be flowing. Tired to be flowing. Nobody wants to suffer again. Praise Brother Jesus. The Bible says in verse 11, Behold, we count them happy, which endure. Will you be happy on that day? Shall the Lord receive you on that day? We count them happy. Today now they are happy in heaven. Brother Paul is happy in heaven. Brother Peter, Brother Stephen, they are happy in heaven. Long time ago, they, are, they, they were there long time ago, but today they are rejoicing ever after. If you want to also rejoice, you must courageously wait for the Lord. Don't haste over whatever you are looking for. Don't cry because evil ones are making it. Don't cry because that person in your neighborhood is making it drive car. If you cry over it, you are dropping your crown. If you cry over the evil ones, I tell you, you are dropping your crown. The Bible says, verse 7, Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job. You have heard of the patience of Job, and he, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful, and of tender mercy. He will not leave you in that condition. Soon and very soon, he will turn that, con he will turn that condition into an air condition. He will not leave you in, in, in that situation. That sorrow will turn to success very soon. If only you can wait the way Brad Job waited. Job was buffeted all over. The children was killed. Everything he had was destroyed. The only person that said that left was somebody that would discourage him. He know that the woman, the wife would be dead to discourage him. That's why he left the woman. Is that friend of yours discouraging you? Is that man of God that you thought is a man of God that we encourage you is not discouraging you? Be courageous. The Bible says even his friends came to visit him. His friends are supposed to come and take care of him. They came and started mocking him. They came and started encouraging him. My brother and sisters, look unto Jesus. Job looked unto the Lord and he made it. If you and I can look unto Jesus, we will also make it. The Bible says the end of Job was more than greater and supernatural greater than where he was before. Have you lost anything? I tell you, what God has for you is much more greater than what you have lost. If you can wait on Him, you will see the glory of God upon your life. If you can wait on the Lord, you will see the hand of God upon your life. The Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 38 to 40, Man, the perfect man, Mark, the perfect man, have they told you nobody can be perfect? Look at it now. Mark the perfect man. The Lord needs perfection. Our month, this month is our month of perfection. Everything we do is to strive to perfection. Month of sanitation. Month of purification in perfection. Now, it says, Mark the man. Mark the perfect man. And behold the all price. For the end of that man is peace. Do you want your end to be in peace? Live a perfect life. Live an enviable life. Live a life of epitome that heaven will say, Yes, I still have a son in her, on earth. I still have a daughter on earth. Because of that son, I will not come and destroy the world. I know through him I can get more people again. Because of my, that my daughter, I am not coming yet. I, I know through him I can get more again. Or will God say, Hey, because of your atrocity, let me just come and finish the word. 
man, the perfect man, and build the upright, the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. That is why you must not envy that lady that is making it. Don't envy that woman that is making money around you. That woman is calling the people up and down. Don't envy her. That sister, that brother, they you know what they are doing. Don't use, it, don't use it to compare yourself or else. You are creating problem for yourself. The Bible says the transgressors shall be cut down. The evil doers shall be cut off from the living. The Bible says in verse 29, But the salvation of the upright is of the Lord. He is a strength in the time of trouble. Brothers and sisters, if your pastor tell you that trouble will not come sometimes, it's a lie. It's an antichrist. Even Christ himself faced some trouble when he was on earth here. Your being born again will not stop you from passing through. If anybody tell you, ah, ah, because you are born again, you will never pass through, it's a lie. There are some exams that you must have to write before you can move to the next level. That's why the road is narrow. What makes it narrow is all those things that you'll be passing through. Not that the road is actually is what you are going through in life that makes the road to be narrow. So please, brothers and sisters, whatever you are going through, whatever the humiliation, hold on to the Lord. Courageously wait on the Lord. Your salvation is in the hand of the Lord. The Bible says He will strengthen you in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them. And deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked. And save them because they trust in him. Do you still trust in the Lord, brother? Are you ever going, giving up? You started three months ago. You were thinking maybe after two weeks everything will turn around. You started in Egypt. It's not so. Christianity is not like Satanism. In Satanism, you can drag out other two weeks. But God's own is prescript by prescript. God's own is timing. You must wait for God's time. Satan can rushly give it to you to get also from you. But God's own no, is prescript to prescript. He take it one after the other. First of all, he will first of all make sure your spiritual life is balanced. So that after giving you that blessing, Satan will not destroy you with the blessing. The Lord is still working on your spiritual life. You want to make sure you are stabilized so that his blessing will not take you away from him. So, brothers and sisters, don't be discouraged. The Lord knows what he's doing. The Lord knows what he's doing in your life. Are you sick? Be strong. Are you passing through some hurdles? Be strong. The Bible says in fire, he will be there with you. You will pass through water. You will pass through fire. That is the pain of life. The Lord himself told us we shall pass through fire. But it is a feeling that you will not be burnt off. You will pass through water. You will not be drowned. You will pass through hunger. He will feed you. You will pass through humiliation. But he will honor you. So, brothers and sisters, don't be discouraged. Be courageous. The time to stand before you come is no more long again. It can be now. The time you will give up is the time the Lord will come up. Praise for Jesus. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 to 49, this is the reason why when you are serving God, you must be joyful. He said, Because thou servest not the Lord, thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. What the Lord wants to see is not, it's not your service. Is your motive of service? How are you serving him? Are you grudgingly waiting on him? Are you are you complaining and serving him? No, the Lord has nothing to do with complainers. Is it because you have not served the Lord with joyfulness and with gladness of heart? For the abundance of things, it might be abundance of pain you are passing through. Be joyful in the Lord. You know, be above of blessing. Be he said, in all things, give thanks to the Lord. For this is the will of God concerning your life. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemy. 
which is which the Lord shall send against thee. I tell you, whatever God has not signed, Satan has no power to do it. Who is he that can say that has come to pass if God has not ordained? Nobody. He said, because you serve God not with joyfulness, say he will send your enemy to come, you will serve your enemy. Then you will know the difference between serving God and serving Satan. It's painful to serve Satan. All those people who think they are driving cars, if they tell you what they are passing through in, in the night, you will not believe it. They don't sleep the way you sleep. Satan can wake them up in the night and say, go and do this now, and they must do it. Holy Spirit can be waking up saying, you'll be stretching, mm, Holy Spirit, I know you are, and later, Holy Spirit, in the morning. But Satan, when he say wake up, if you don't wake up, he will strike you. They don't sleep in the night. They kill every day. The Lord don't want us to pass through those pains. He say, therefore, shall the Lord, that shall that serve their enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. Remember, in hellfire, no food there. It's hunger, hunger, hunger. In hellfire, it's taste, taste, taste. There's no water there. In hellfire, nobody's wearing clothes. The Lord is showing us the picture of hell now. You will serve that demon there if you refuse to serve God now with joyfulness. If you refuse to hold on to God now with all joy, with all meekness, with all laughter. He said he will send you to hell fire. You will serve Satan there with hunger, with thirst, with nakedness, and in want of all things. Maybe now because of documents you fell apart and you are having every other thing around you. Because of those documents, because of maybe pregnancy, you fell apart. When you get to a fire, every other thing you had before, no one will be there for you. Just because of one thing, you went to a fire. Every other thing you ever enjoy, no one will be there for you again. Then you will know what you are you to have cost yourself. May that not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, so you will suffer the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until... He have destroyed thee. This is hellfire, the pitch of hellfire. Won't you wait for the Lord with joyfulness? Won't you serve the Lord with all joy? Do you want to go and experience what, the, what this picture is showing us now? This is exactly the pitch of hell. What is happening in hellfire? Hunger, thirst, nakedness, want of all things. Say it will put the yoke of iron upon your neck. This is exactly what they are expressing in hellfire now. So, brothers and sisters, don't go there. You have entered the road of righteousness. Don't deviate. Let nobody discourage you. People that stand with you, they may have gone back. I tell you, you are not a den. Don't move with the wind of crowd. Don't move with the wind of doctrine. Please keep on moving. Be courageous. Courageously wait upon the Lord. It might not be easy, but I tell you, very soon, very, very soon, everything shall be easy for you. Don't go the way they have gone. Don't move to the way they have moved to. Praise for that Jesus. The Bible says, The Lord shall bring their nation upon you, and that will not be your portion. This is what is happening in Nigeria now. Because they have refused to serve God with all joy. They are packing themselves into demonic, demonic service. Now, nation that they never understand the language is coming upon them now. It's exactly verse 49. It's, happening, it's, a ba it's already happening in Nigeria now. Because they have not honored God. Because they have led the way of God into Bela, into demonic service. Now, they are suffering it now. A nation that's supposed to be calm. A nation that God was dwelling now. God has led them now. And the nation, they don't know. They are coming upon them now. America is coming now. France is coming. Foreign languages are coming now to come and destroy them. But I pray they quickly, they turn back to, to the Lord. Praise for that Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 2 verse 7. To whom? To them whom by patience continues in well-doing. Seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life. This is what we should be after. 
Not after bread and butter you will eat today, after four hours you are hungry again. He said, no, don't let those things pull you down. Car that you, you will drive, before you know it, when you have an accident, you cannot sit again. A house you will build, if earthquake happen there, it's gone. Is that what we take to hellfire? What is that thing that will justify your going to hellfire now? What is that thing on earth? I reason it. What is that on earth that I did not make here? What is that thing I brought from heaven now that, that I'm dying for? When my mother gave birth to me, every, I was naked. And I so much believe if Christ does not come before I die, nothing I will take away. Why should I die because of things I will leave behind? The Bible says we should continue in well-doing. Seek for glory. Seek for the honor that the Lord will give to you. And immortality, eternal life. Brothers and sisters, let us work for eternal life, not things of this world. You will make them here, you will certainly leave them here. Our brother that enjoyed everything, Brother Solomon, he left everything behind. At the end, he said, vanity on vanity equal to vanity. He wanted to enjoy every woman all over the world. But when he died, he left all the women. He left all the cars, all the houses, everything he had. So you, you and I will also leave them. If your children so love you so much, they will bury you in one of the rooms. They know our father really suffered. He made sure we become what we are today. Let us not bury him outside. Let us bury him inside the room. And meanwhile, your soul is where it is that time. Why would you want to die? Why would you want to destroy yourself because of these things? Now, seek for those things that the Lord has to... Seek for honor. The Lord want to honor you and I on the last day. Seek for glory. Seek for immortality. And I'll see for eternal life. Because of time, let me rush over. Romans chapter 12 and 12. Rejoice in hope. Patient in tribulation. If you want to get all these things we are named now, to get honor, to get glory, to get immortality, to get eternal life, see what you do? Romans 12 and 2. Verse 12. Rejoice in hope. You have hope in the Lord. Rejoice in it. Keep on hoping. Keep on dancing. Keep on rejoicing until he come. Rejoice in hope. Patient in tribulation. Are you passing through? Be patient. Has your parents left you because of righteousness? Be patient. Has your husband abandoned you? Be patient. Has your friends abandoned you? Be patient. If you are patient, the Lord will bring them back to you again. He can do it. Patient in tribulation. Continue instant in prayer. Don't stop praying. Never stop praying. Keep on praying. Hallelujah. Because of time, when you get home, read Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 8. If you read it, it says, Better is the end of the thing than beginning thereof. What the Lord to see in your life is your end, not what you are doing now. Mark 8, verse 38, write it down so. The Bible says, whoever that faints now, he will not enter his kingdom. Whoever that is ashamed of him now, on the last day, he will also be ashamed of the person. Don't be ashamed because your friends are making it. Eh, you are very scared. They are left not you. Hmm. Don't be ashamed. Romans 1, 16. Say, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Be ready to carry the gospel of Christ. Don't be ashamed of his gospel. If you are ashamed of his, of his gospel, that means you, have, you are also ashamed to enter his kingdom. Mark 8, 35. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it on earth here. Yeah? Whosoever that shall lose his life for the sake of the Son of God and for the sake of his gospel, the same shall save it. My brother, heaven is worth losing life for on earth here. 
the glory of heaven is worth losing anything for on earth here. If you lose anything, lose your car, anything at all, if you lose it because of heaven, you, you gain. But if you gain those things and lose heaven, you're in trouble. So, brothers and sisters, my father, who is your father, the king of kings and the lord of lords, has sent me tonight to encourage you, to encourage me, to stand firm, to stand strong, to stand right, to stand holy, to stand courageous in waiting for him. You see, I should tell you, he's not going to tarry no more. He's not going to stay too long again, for this is his last used generation. Praise Master Jesus. So, brother and sister, if you know you are you hear the sound of my voice, you are not born again. Hmm. You are only living a wasted life. Repent tonight and surrender to Jesus Christ. And if you know you are almost giving up, stand up again now. If you know you are sleeping now, stand up and keep moving again. Don't allow Christ to meet you in your sleeping. Don't allow Christ to meet you in that your bad your city state. Wake up, get up, and start moving. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. This is the word of Lord tonight. And let's do the half years.